What you say, ladies and gents, it is your boy, Bacat Sam, and yes, it is coming to the end of the year, so you know that only means one thing. No, not Christmas, we're not here to talk about that. We're not talking about New Year, we're talking about the best Premier League team of 2021. And before we get into the video, please smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So let's get right into it. Let's roll that intro. So we've got to start off with the goalkeeper. You've got to start from the back, don't you? And a lot of you know I'm a West Brom fan, so this pains me to say this, but it has to be him. Emmy Martinez in goal. This keeper, wow, £20 million he cost him from Arsenal, and everyone, there was question marks when he joined, like why on earth has he gone there? Because he was doing so well at Arsenal, but wow, what a player. He has had such a good calendar year. Not, we're only talking about the Premier League here because I could talk about his time with Argentina in the summer. But no, we're only talking about the Premier League and wow, what a player he has been. The third most saves last season. Yes, he's had a bit of a an, an iffy start this season, but you know what you're going to get from him. He's brilliant on the ball. He's a brilliant shot stopper. He saves penalties. He's commanding. He's big. He's confident. He's a leader. And I love him as well for that moment against, I think it was Manchester United when he saved that penalty. Wow. You know when he did a little, little dance? Oh, you've, got, you've got to love it, haven't you? You've got to love it. That's what we call S house rate, and we love that from him. So he has to go in straight away as my keeper of the year in the Premier League. So now we'll skirt over to our right back, and this again is a really easy one. It didn't really take much time. The back fourth for me was the easiest, but right back straight away is Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yes, Reese James had a good year, but he's still not on Trent's level. Trent, what he's doing, he has literally revolutionised the fullback. The way he whips that ball in, as I say, it's Beckham-esque. He takes free kicks, he drives the ball. Yes, a lot of people say, oh, he's not great defensively. But the amount he does going forward is just unquestionable. And you've got to remember that the amount of goals and assists this guy's getting. He's competing with wing He's doing better than wingers. He's already got 10 goal contributions this season. This Literally this season. It's crazy. The guy is an absolute stat machine. He's brilliant for the fancy football. He saved me so much. And he's just a very, very good player, very composed on the ball, great driving with the ball, and he's been part of that Liverpool side. The reason why they're doing so well. So again, it's so simple and so easy. He's been at this level now for quite a few years. I don't even know how it's a discussion who's the best right back right now in the league. It's not even a discussion. It has to be Trent. So Trent is the best right back in the Premier League in 2021. Now moving over to the centre-back partnerships. And my first name in those two centre-backs has got to be Ruben Diaz. A lot of people say he's overrated. And... I don't think he is. What he does, what he did for Man City last season and in this calendar year is absolutely huge. He's part of that Man City defence which have got the most clean sheets in one calendar year. It was just 34 clean sheets he's got and he's been the integral part to that. A captain, a leader, very good on the ball and he's he's got that, I don't know how to describe it, he's very neat and very clean but he also has that grit, determination, that side where you can see he's going to throw his body on the line for the defence because you see him flying into challenges, making really unorthodox blocks where he throws his body forward. You've got to love it and what he did to that Man City side last season, he revolutionised it and he is huge for them and I think he kind of goes unnoticed because a lot of people say he's overrated but... I think we overlook him. I think he needs more respect. I can't believe I'm saying that. Ruben Diaz needs more respect. But yeah, he's definitely the best centre-back in the Premier League in 2021. Now on to the other centre-back. And this really surprises me that this guy has come out so well. Because when he signed, there was a lot of question marks. Because he didn't really hit the ground running. It is Antonio Rudiger. He's been huge since Tommy Tuchel. I need to stop calling him Tommy Tuchel. Since Thomas Tuchel has come in and got involved with uh, Chelsea... He's revolutionised as a defender. Yes, he's part of a back three, and I like to say the back three tax, but he's been huge for them, playing on that left-hand side of that back three. He drives the ball, he's got pace, his physicality. We always knew he would be the perfect centre-back. We were just waiting for it, and he's slowly formed into that role, and he's very, very good. Huge for them, and the reason why they have done so well under Thomas Tuchel, and that is why there is right now a lot of contract discussions going on and he's in a bit of trouble because he wants a lot of money because he deserves it he knows his value he's a very very good defender so for me he has to slot in as the other best center back of 2021 in the premier league now which this left back position it's crazy to say this i don't think it's a discussion again it's cancelo has got to be the best left back and he's not even a left back and he played in the calendar year as a left back, he was huge for Man City last season. He's huge for them this season. It's not even recency bias why he's in this. You know what he brings to this side. It's pace. It's He can come inside. He can go down the wing. He scores goals. 
very just there's not much to say about him he's the same with Trent the numbers these guys are putting up are, is absolutely ridiculous but the thing is I really like with Cancelo is he's a right footed player playing on the left hand side and you wouldn't know unless you, like as in when I say you wouldn't notice it obviously you'd notice he's right footed but I'm saying you wouldn't notice because he doesn't seem out of place what he's done for that Man City side they were really worried when all the stuff went on with Mendy we're not going to go into discussions they needed someone to fill that left back role and he's just stepped in like it's absolutely nothing, like he's been playing that position all of his life. So Cancelo has to be the best left back in the Premier League in 2021. Whilst I'm having a quick sip of my coffee, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And comment anybody you disagree with or anybody you think I need to put in. Yeah, go do that now, look. Let's get right back into it. Now to the holding midfielder. And I'm going to open up here, be vulnerable and be honest with a lot of you. Before I started this YouTube channel, this is a player now who I'm playing in, putting in my holding midfielder as the Premier League holding midfielder of the year. Jeez, I butchered that, but we're going to keep it in. The holding midfielder, I slagged off and said I didn't think he was ever good enough and I thought he was overhyped, but I take it all back and I say it all the time. Declan Rice, what a player, what a gem. This guy is it literally, it baffles me how good this guy is. He literally does everything. Last season, we saw him playing very deep. This season, he's moving on forward. He's starting to get those goals and assists that... David Moyes said he wanted to add to his game, and I really like him. Him and Suchek is a midfield, and Suchek had just about missed out on this team because I think Suchek, again, is underrated, but Declan Rice is huge for West Ham. He is Mr. West Ham, the way he passes the ball, the way he moves, the way he drives with the ball, but then defensively as well, he's huge. He's integral for that side, and we've got to remember, West Ham are in Europe. It's meant that they're in the same league, sorry, they're in the same competition now as Barcelona and Declan Rice, a lot of it is down to him. He was huge for them this season, really, and last season, sorry. Really like him, really like him as a player. He has to slot in as the best hard midfielder of 2021. Now to the other centre mid, it again is an easy one. Ilkay Gundogan, 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 Gundogan. I never know how you say it, but I'm going to say Gundogan. No, I'm not, I'd never say Gundogan. I'm going to say Gundogan, Gundogan, Juan. Why am I struggling? Who knows how you pronounce it? You guys, I'd say you guys can tell me in the comments, but you can't really tell me how to pronounce it in the comments. But it has to be him. This guy was a top goal scorer for Man City from centre midfield. And yes, everyone thinks, oh, he had that one patch. But throughout the season, he was so good for them that the amount of times they'd look to him and he was the man. He'd come up with everything. He was getting assists. He was scoring goals. He was playmaking. Because everyone thought when David Silva left, who's going to take that role and, get, and be that playmaker? And Gunda Juan, <laughs> I'm overdoing it now, was huge for them last season. He took that role and he made it his. I really liked him in that central midfield role where he's box to box defensively as well. He was huge. And Man City were a force last year and they are this season. And a lot of it is down to him. A player who does go unnoticed because he doesn't... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. He doesn't. Yes, he bag a lot of goals, but then when he doesn't bag goals, people don't notice him. It's because a lot of the stuff he does is off the ball. It's his movement. It's the way he takes the ball in space on the half turn and just moves it on fast. He's very, very good player, and I really like him. To my other centre mid, I think this one potentially people may disagree with, but I don't think this is discussion. Yuri Tielemans. He's been part of that Leicester midfield. He, that yes, last season they did bottle it. But he's been so good for a consistent amount of years now. Very, very good ball playing, box to box midfielder. He breaks a play, moves it around, and he's got that real nice vision that a lot of players don't have. He sees a pass that I'm watching the game and I don't notice it. It's, it's mental. He's always about three pages ahead of the rest of the team. He's always looking. If you watch him, he's, any young people watching this channel, watch him. He's not when he's not got the ball. He's constantly looking over his shoulder and he's creating an image of his mind. You know, he's got a 360 view of everything at all times. Very, very good. You very rarely see him give the ball away. He's a very neat player, and I really, really like the Belgian international. A player who, when he moved to Monaco when he was younger from Anderlecht, a lot of people said he wasn't good enough, and we've seen now at Leicester, he is good enough, and he's a great player. Has to be part of that midfield three, and the best centre mid in the Premier League in 2021. Now on to the wingers and the strikers. So we're going to start off with left wing. It has got to be Huming Son. This player, I think, again, he's underrated because he was in Kane's shadow last season. 17 goals. He was fourth in the Golden Boot race and he's been huge for them this season. A player that's got pace. He's a very good finisher. He's one of the best finishers in the Premier League. If you actually dive into the stats, his shot to goal ratio is massive. It's, it's very, very accurate. He's a very good player. He'll go past players. I just really like him. I think he's the perfect winger. He's exactly what you want in the modern day. He's kind of an inside forward winger. Kind of similar to my right winger. So let's quickly hop over there. That was a really good segue. So I'm really proud of yourself. Over to Mo Salah. There's not much more I can say really. This guy is an absolute bagsman. 
and we all thought that first season he's a one one season wonder he's going to go into that meet you category uh that uh what's his name Je uh, I, I, I suppose jean is it jean something like that the sunderland player but you know what i'm trying to say everyone thought he was a one season wonder and wow has he proved us all wrong this guy is a bagsman and you know exactly what he's going to do i always compare him to robin you know he's going to cut on that left foot and he constantly scores from anywhere all types of goals he is huge for Liverpool and he was last season and he is again this season. It's mental to think about how many goals he's already scored this season. Has to be Salah. And then the striker, I think this thing where people think about recency and re recently, yes, Harry Kane hasn't had the best season, but let's just ignore that. Every striker has patches where they don't score. He was huge. He topped the goal scoring and the assist charts last season for Harry, Harry Kane. What a player. Absolutely huge. And... Hopefully now after he scored against Liverpool in last week, he'll start bagging again. But he's a great player and I think he's overlooked. And a lot of people now would say no chance should he make this squad. But just think how good he was last season across the year. He was a very, very good striker. And I feel like he still potentially can break the Alan Shearer record. And I think he will. I think he's just having a bit of a moment because obviously he's throwing his toys out the pram. He wants to leave. But he is a very, very good striker. We all know what he's capable of. And I think we're going to start to see it under Antonio Conte in 2022. And I hope so because I really like him as a striker. Great, great player. But that's it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this team. If you disagree with anybody I've said in that 11... Let me know in the comment section below. It is Martinez in goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Diaz, Rudiger, Cancelo, Declan Rice, Gundogan, Juan, Tielemans, Son, Salah and Kane. I think that's a great team. I don't think it's a discussion. But yeah, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. But lots more videos coming to you lot soon because I left YouTube, yeah? It's got a bit dusty and I'm coming back. I'm going to post so many videos. I'm back, baby. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it, guys. Book out, Sam. Over and out. Thank you. Goodbye. Pshh.